following subject matter is real and only intended for mature audiences. Discretion is advised. People are dead after deputies say a man went on a shooting rampage. I knew a week before she died, I was going to kill her. I can tell you the scene out there is absolutely horrific. Nobody knows where this individual may strike next. This is 10 Minute Murder. Welcome to 10 Minute Murder, brief and bingeable true crime. I'm Joe, the host, and thank you for being here today. If you're brand new to the podcast, first of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you're subscribed to 10 Minute Murder so that you don't miss any episodes in the future. And third, be sure we're connected on Facebook and Instagram. In the show notes of this episode, you'll find the links to where you can find 10 Minute Murder on Facebook and Instagram, or you can just type in 10 Minute Murder into the little search bar, the area at the top of Facebook and Instagram where you would normally go and stalk your ex. Don't do that. Uh, instead, just type 10 Minute Murder and it'll pop right up and you can follow there. Uh, I post visuals that go along with the episodes so you can check out what it is that I'm talking about. Like visually, some people are visual and that's fine. Um, so that's why I post pictures. So photos are available. Facebook and Instagram, just go and find 10 Minute Murder there and uh, it'll get you all set up. The episode today is going to be really dark and devil worshipy. So just a heads up for you. On January 17th, 1998, 16-year-old Fabio Tolis and 19-year-old Chiaro Marino suddenly disappeared. The couple had spent their Saturday night drinking beer and listening to heavy metal music at the Midnight Pub in Milan, Italy. But unfortunately, they never returned home. Authorities initially thought that Fabio and Chiara had just run off together. But the parents refused to accept that their children would voluntarily disappear. Fabio's father, Michel, began his six-year-long investigation that included him attending several metal concerts and festivals all across Europe spreading the word about his missing son. And during his tireless search, Michel became convinced that Fabio and his friend's group had not just been interested in playing black metal and death metal. They were also deeply obsessed with Satanism and the occult, with the members calling themselves the Beasts of Satan. Finally, when Fabio's former bandmate, Andrea Volope, was arrested in 2004 for the murder of his ex-girlfriend, Michel took his findings to the police. His story of the satanic cult was strange, but as one of the investigators said, Michel didn't just tell a story. Quote, he backed it up with a very convincing body of paperwork and photographs, which he had gathered over the past six years. He carried out a true investigation on the disappearance of his son and his son's girlfriend, all on his own. And so the dossier was used to interrogate Andrea, who eventually confessed, unraveling what was, quote, one of the most shocking crimes in post-war Italy. On that Saturday night in 1998, Fabio and Chiara had been at Midnight Pub with the other Beasts of Satan members, including Andrea, also Nicola, Mario, uh, Pietro, Mary Angela, and several other members. At some point, Fabio called his father saying that he wasn't going to come home that night and he wanted to stay at his girlfriend's house, which was very unlike him. And right after that call, the group actually headed into the woods near the Soma Lombardo, uh, which was about 30 miles northwest of Milan. In that forest, the Beast of Satan members continued drinking and taking drugs. Some of the group already knew what was about to happen someone would be sacrificed as an offering to Satan, but nobody knew who until the moment that it was going to happen. As they gathered around the freshly dug pit, Andrea called out a name, Chiara Marino. And one of the reasons why Chiara had been chosen to be sacrificed seemed to be Andrea's accusations of her being the reincarnation of the Virgin Mary. According to other members, Andrea also saw Fabio as a threat to his power in the sect and needed to teach him a lesson. As Andrea pulled out his blade, Fabio, who was a pretty big dude, 6'2", 220 pounds, he moved in to protect his girlfriend. And unfortunately, he was eventually overpowered by the larger group, and he was stabbed with knives and beaten in the head with hammers until he couldn't fight back anymore. And Chiara was a way easier target, being much smaller. She was stabbed through the chest and to her heart by Andrea, 
before both victims were pushed down into a pit. Some of the members dipped their cigarettes in Chiara and Fabio's blood before smoking them and dancing on their grave after filling the hole, saying, quote, Now you're both zombies. Try and get out of this hole if you dare. But they weren't zombies because that's not a real life thing and they were just murdered by people that they thought were friends. The next day, Andre returned to the scene with several gallons of ammonia to make sure animals would not dig up the bodies. And nobody would, and not for the next six years at least. Nine months after the double murder, one member of the Beasts of Satan was having a hard time with it. Andrea Bonatide. And by the way, this is a different Andrea from the other one, so we'll call him Andrea B. He had been in the forest to help dig the pit, ready for the victims, but he refused to participate in the actual killings. As a result of that, the other members of the group bullied him and terrorized him about being weak. In 1998, Andrea B. was trying to get the sect members to take responsibility for what they had done and go to the police. When the others refused, Andrea B. threatened to go himself, and unfortunately, that most likely cost him his life. On the night of September 21st, 1998, the Beasts of Satan members were out partying, as they often did. At some point, the sect challenged Andrea B. to drive his car as fast as possible to show them he wasn't actually weak, he wasn't a coward. But the thing is, Andrea B.'s so-called friends had drugged him earlier with a cocktail. He was extremely intoxicated. And so Andrea B. ended up driving his car into a wall going over 180 kilometers per hour, killing himself instantly. Andre B's death was officially ruled a suicide, even though he was really another victim of the beasts of Satan after posing a threat to the sect. Meanwhile, Fabio's father had been desperately searching for his son in hopes that his friends had been telling the truth that Chiara and Fabio had just simply run off. Michel attended every heavy metal concert and festival in Europe he possibly could. In addition, he placed leaflets in all the fanzines, hoping that someone would come forward with information about his son. And unfortunately, Michelle's efforts were in vain. Still, even though there were no leads to follow, he documented everything. Every person he met, all the relationships, all the connections he uncovered. Michelle's dedication would eventually be the most important piece in finding out the truth about what happened to Fabio and Chiara. But before that, one more person had to die. On the evening of January 24th, 2004, Andrea Velope's ex-girlfriend, 27-year-old Mary Angela, headed to the chalet of Andrea's current girlfriend, 18-year-old Elisabetta Ballerin. Andrea had called Mary Angela and asked her to join them for dinner. However, the real reason was that Andrea felt he needed to get rid of his ex-girlfriend. She knew too much about the beasts of Satan crimes in the past. After their breakup, and as Andrea started to date Elisabetta, Mary Angela had begun to make comments to people around that she wanted to go to the police. And so, as soon as Mary Angela arrived, a violent argument erupted. Andrea pointed his Smith & Wesson at his ex-girlfriend's face and fired a shot, striking Mary Angela in the neck. She fell, blood pouring from her wound, but still alive. And unaware that he'd actually not killed the victim, Andrea called the Beasts of Satan leader, Nicola Sapone, saying, quote, we're going to drink the beer. That sentence was a pre-planned code word to let Nicola know Mary Angela was dead. However, when he arrived at the scene to take care of burying the body, Nicola noted that there was one problem. Mary Angela was still very much alive, and in a burst of anger, he screamed at Andrea, this is disgusting. You don't even know how to kill someone. Mary Angela was hit several times with a shovel before the three buried her in a shallow grave. After that, Nicola returned home like nothing ever happened, while Elisabetta and Andrea decided to get rid of Mary Angela's car. However, on their way to the river, Elisabetta, who was high on a mixture of cocaine and heroin, crashed the vehicle into a wall of a bridge. And nothing seemed to be going as the way they'd planned, and it frustrated Andrea. So when he pulled up behind Elisabetta's car, he seemed to have lost it. A man inside a building next to the scene called the police to let them know that there was someone on the street kicking and screaming at a payphone. When police arrived, they found both Andrea and Elisabetta in such a state that they took them straight to the hospital. There, Elisabetta kept on going on telling crazy stuff, like how she had just helped kill a woman. And even though it seemed like she was crazy and out of her mind and most likely intoxicated, authorities 
had to go check it out to see if there's any truth to the, what she was saying. And the following day, it was very clear that Elizabetta had been telling the truth. Police found the half-buried body of Mary Angela at the Ballerin family chalet. And some accounts say she died because of shovel hits to the head, but unfortunately, many others say that she was buried alive and had died from suffocation after she inhaled soil. Whichever the case, Andrea was arrested and the news about the murder started to spread. This is the point where Fabio's father's long journey finally came to its end. After recognizing Andrea from the news, Michel took all the information he'd gathered during the years and laid it all out for the police. With all the evidence against him, Andrea quickly confessed to not just killing Mary Angela, but also Chiara and Fabio. He agreed to lead police where the couple had been buried six years earlier. And so Fabio and Chiara's remains were finally brought back home. Andrea also named all the other members of the Beasts of Satan. And when questioned, Pietro confessed to having beaten Fabio in the head with a hammer. Another member, Mario, had admitted to his part as well in killing Fabio. On February 27, 2005, Andrea Velope and Pietro Guerreri were found guilty. Andrea received 30 years for the murders of Fabio, Chiara, and Mary Angela. The prosecutor actually asked for 20 years, but the judge gave him 30. Pietro was sentenced to 16 years for his role in Fabio and Chiara's murders. However, Mario was officially cleared of all charges as his part in the crimes was seen as secondary. Five more group members were sent to trial in June 2005, including Elisabetta Ballerin and Nicola Sampone, and were sentenced to between 24 years to life. During their trials, the Beasts of Satan members said that their drug usage was supplied by a higher authority and that they were actually part of a more extensive satanic network in Italy. Also, these three murders were allegedly not the only ones the group members had committed, not even close. In total, the sect has been linked to possibly 14 other deaths, maybe more. In reaction to the crimes, the Roman Catholic Church offered seminars on demon possession and exorcism for priests, and some even called for death metal to be banned altogether. But the truth is, music doesn't make you kill someone else. There has to be wickedness deep inside the person. And like Andrea said in his diary, we are wicked individuals. We plague the earth and we play with their lives. We know no pity. That's 10 Minute Murder for today. Brief and bingeable true crime. Thanks for listening and be sure you are subscribed to 10 Minute Murder so that you don't miss any episodes in the future because coming up in October, it's extra spooky episodes for Spooky Month. So you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, so subscribe and also connect with 10 Minute Murder on Facebook and Instagram. You can go to the show notes of this episode and uh, I'll put the links there. And just as easily, you can go to the search bar of wherever you um, want to follow 10 Minute Murder, Facebook or Instagram, type it in and it'll pop right up. Thanks for listening to 10 Minute Murder. Have a good night.